Hi, my name is John Beatty, and uh, I'm doing a tutorial for Jerry on her uh, automotive art. So that you people that have been asking her if you can color it in vector, um, well, now you'll be able to find out how it's done. And this is the down and dirty, quick, let's get it done version. Um, for people that are basically going to be wanting to just add flat color uh, into a car without a lot of gradients or anything fancy or tricky or anything like that um, you can do that later on uh, but right now let's just go over a very basic way of still you know being able to color in vector for those of you who choose to instead of bringing it into Photoshop um, the palette you'll need open is of course your swatch palette uh, you'll need your transparency palette open your pathfinder palette, your appearance, your layers palette, uh, your color sliders, and your uh, spot colors. I prefer to use the Pantone solid uh, uncoated colors because it's going on a shirt and there's no texture, no paper stock, so there's no reason to really get into the coated uh, uh, paper Pantones on, on something like this. You can do it, but um, this works just as good. And uh, to find all these um, in Illustrator CS2, which is what we're working in, you just go up to the window, and as you can see, the ones I've checked off, those are the ones that we currently have uh, on our workspace here. Um, let's take a look at this file. I'm going to go ahead and hit the Tab key, which will uh, hide the uh, palettes in the toolbar that was over here, and using an outline view which the shortcut to that is control Y or command Y on a uh, Mac and the difference will be uh, Mac users uh, you will use your command key and your option key and PC users uh, control and alt key so I will refer to uh, PC shortcuts and Mac users will be able to follow along just by remembering that your um, option key is your alt key and your command key is the control key. So I hope that didn't confuse you right there. As you can see when Jerry constru uh, uh, constructs a car, when she puts one together as she's building it in Illustrator, uh, she's taking it into Photoshop to color, uh, not into Illustrator or another vector program. I'm not sure this will work in Corel, so you're going to have to use your Corel knowledge if you are using Corel as your vector program and see if you can uh, do this. I think you can. I think it has basically the same options. So anyway, uh, like I said, like here's the back tire, you know, so uh, Jerry doesn't work her cars into uh, a compound path. Therefore, those of you that have written her or asked her, you know, why can't I just select an area and pop a color in? This is why. Um, because her mindset and the way she's done things is uh, bottom end is she knows it's going into Photoshop and uh, so we're gonna solve that problem uh, let's go back to the artwork view uh, by hitting control Y um, and let's bring our palettes back up by uh, hitting the tab key again okay so the first thing we really want to do is um, let's zoom out a little bit on this car and uh, what we want to do is set up our workspace so that um, we can get some, some color going here. So what I'm going to do is uh, select everything, which is Control A, and then I'm going to group it, which is Control G. Uh, this is going to be layer one, which of course the artwork is already on. And we're going to come up here to our transparency palette, and we're going to make this multiply. Okay, come down here to your layers palette. Double click on this layer. Let's change this to black. And hit enter. And let's go ahead and lock this layer by clicking right in here. And it shows you the little uh, lock icon. Now we're going to come down here to the uh, create a new layer. And we're going to get layer 2. And let's drag that below our black layer. And let's go ahead and label that colors. Now while I'm here on the layers option, um, 
let's go ahead and look at a few things. You can name these uh, layers whatever you want, and you can also change the color of the uh, guides that's going to come up. Red's fine on this. Uh, it's very visible, so let's go ahead and keep this red. Uh, each layer that you make will have its own uh, designated color. You can always come in here and change it, though, if you prefer, or if it's easier to, you know, say if this was a red car, well, you know, it'd be kind of hard to see uh, to, to see red on red. So you might want to come in and change it to blue or to another color. Uh, that's up to you. But we're going to go ahead and say OK on that right now. OK, so uh, it's time to get to work on this car. And uh, first and foremost, I'm going to lay in the uh, base color of the uh, of the paint. So instead of doing a black car, instead of doing a white car, uh, I've seen a few of these cars uh, running around in different colors. And um, let's go ahead and do uh, like an emerald green uh, colored car. Yeah, sure, it may be ugly, but for demonstration purposes, I think it might uh, it might look okay on screen and you know color you can pick anytime so uh, it helps if you have a Pantone uh, swatch book handy and let's type in in the uh, find which if yours doesn't show up automatically just come over here to this little fly out this little triangle and click this show find field and it'll open up this little area which you can type the uh, Pantone number in so let's try a 561 See, it automatically is going to find that color, and let's go ahead and click that. Over here, we've got the fill and the stroke palette. We're going to get rid of this black stroke because we're only going to be working in fills right now. And also notice that it's put our Pantone color into our swatches file, which is good because we're going to uh, come back to this later. I'm going to go ahead and minimize uh, this for the time being. and. Um, going to get over here to my pen tool and actually what I need to do is uh, make sure you're on the colors layer I'm going to go ahead and tab the uh, the palettes off zoom way in on this and uh, by the way, to get this magnifying glass, it's just the uh, keyboard shortcut Z. And if you hold the Alt down, you can zoom out. And that's basically uh, it for, for the zoom tool. It's very, uh, very easy to use. It's a very handy tool. And if you need to, uh, while you're using it or any other tool, if you hit the space bar, you're going to get this little hand. And you can move your... Um, your image around as you work on it. Now I need to get back to my pen tool uh, so that I can start laying in the color on this so the keyboard shortcut on that is just going to be P. Okay now what we want to do is draw just like this um, right through the middle of the black area of the vehicle or whatever we're coloring in and you really don't have to um, worry about coloring over something that is going to be another color. Now if you see here what I did is I pulled the uh, anchor point so that I'd get that nice curve and if I hold my alt key down I can I can pull this in any direction I need to. So I'm going to just shorten it and then I'm going to pick it up right about here and pull and you'll see how this is going to fill in. Now this is going to take a little bit of time. It's you know, it's not a fast procedure, and especially if you're not familiar with the pen tool, you're going to you're going to have a little bit of problems at first with it. Um, you're going to have growing pains. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to curse. You're going to cry. You're going to wish you never uh, had started this. Actually, you know, just you can even uh, if you don't want to try to pull the curves, which actually makes it go faster you can do these short little choppy strokes uh, like I'm doing now um, if that's to your liking uh, or if it's just more uh, comfortable uh, for you to work on so as I'm going around this car uh, 
you can see I'm not worried about what I'm filling in right now except that I'm staying inside of this uh, holding line this black holding line which is the important thing right now um, that's where we want to stay we don't want to we don't want to go outside of that we want to stay inside of it and that all has to do with the final uh, execution of the file which we're going to get to shortly as we walk through this tutorial and instruct you on how to color these files in a vector format uh, with flat color and like I said if you wanted to you could come in here and, and go crazy with gradients and uh, other stuff, uh, you know, uh, highlights and stuff like that. But for right now, let's just stick. Now, see, I went into the tire. Um, so what we're going to do is Control Z out and just bring our selection back in here. Okay, so. I hope you get the basic idea of what I'm doing here and that it's not too confusing and I hope you don't mind watching me uh, go through the entire car um, so I can go ahead and just you know go over this it's unnecessary right now alright so I hope you're kinda getting the idea of what's going on it's not as hard as it looks once you uh, once you understand it a bit once you've experimented in Illustrator once you've gotten used to the pen tool which is really the backbone of the whole program um, learning the pen tool is, is, is key to everything that, that Illustrator can do and I highly recommend that you take time to um, practice with it, uh, practice tracing objects and tracing shapes. Uh, it's, it's a very powerful uh, tool to have in your in your toolbox and in your knowledge base. And as you can see uh, what I'm doing right now is is not even anything fancy. It's just very simple and basic work and we've almost got the completed uh, let's get that a little less close to the tire okay and when you get the little zero or the little circle next to the pen tool when I'm about to connect this that means I'll make a complete selection okay so using uh, control and zero we're gonna zoom out and just take a look at this while it's still selected and you can see that we've covered the entire body of the car in green and I'm gonna do the keyboard shortcut of A which brings up my arrow tool and I'm just gonna click away from the artwork and that'll deselect it and let's bring our palettes back up and there we have our green on the car as you can see okay and that looks pretty good so the next thing uh, I guess that we should do is uh, let's get some gray uh, going on the tires so I'm going to actually let's open back up here uh, this thing's giving me a little bit of trouble come on now here we go okay let's go ahead and close that down all right um, Let's go with a pretty dark gray. Uh, for ah, see if you don't type this in fast, you're gonna lose it. So get get used to your um <laughs> your number board uh, your number keyboard too. 429, and that's gonna give us this gray. But I'm thinking 430 is gonna be a little better. And if you see it, it puts it over there into our um our fill color, and it already throws it into the swatches and uh, basically what we're gonna do is uh, let's go ahead and hit our tab key blow up on on our wheels here wheels and tires and P to get our pen tool back and let's run through this as quick as we can just 
just going around and don't worry about this because we're going to go in the other direction in the minute uh, in a minute so it's it's not going to affect anything that we've already done as you'll be able to see and if the client has the budget and if you want you'll be able to use more colors um, as it is I'm thinking this is gonna be probably five um, we'll have the black of course we'll have the green the gray uh, I need a, a blue which I guess we'll use for the windows and the um, and the rims and perhaps a orange for these uh, parking lights now if you're on a real limited budget and I could only do three colors well then let me uh, let me control Z back um, then we'd even have to do less colors and that's just something of course that's going to be dependent upon um, your client and their budget and if they're willing to pay for those extra colors which as we know some are and some aren't okay let's go ahead and zoom out look around and there we've got our spot colored wheels and let's get over to this one and let's go up a little bit more get our pen tool out now on this one you know I'm gonna just really swing this out hit my alt key and bring it back in on this side on the handle and go ahead and just kind of put these in choppy because they're going to get cut down uh, later on in this tutorial and that's going to be the magic behind uh, behind this um, that's a little close let's go ahead and control Z out to undo that and pull another line that'll work a little bit better So the value of this CD set is enormous, and those of you that have purchased it, I hope you realize that uh, what a value you have gotten, and that it's going to pay for itself uh, with the first job you do, uh, if not the first, uh, at least the second. There's just so much, um, so much that Jerry's included on this one CD. It's it's a phenomenal bargain. And for anybody uh, in the screen print business um, that needs vehicles quick, uh, it's what a time saver, and just you know, w what a gift she's she's really given to everyone at such a, a ridiculously low price. Um, so there's our wheels in gray. Um, let's uh, let's go on and uh, do a little bit of the glass areas and. Um, what I'm going to do is, is go ahead and pause this and come back once the rest is done since I think you get the idea now of, of what we're doing. I'm not going to do anything different, but instead of boring you with me making these selections, I'm going to go ahead and pause. And uh, when we come back, basically I'm going to just fill in the windshields and the lights and the, the wheels and that type of stuff. So not much is going to change. Okay, be right back. Okay, I'm back, and uh, as you can see, uh, I've got the car blocked in in nice, solid spot uh, colors. And our client called while I was working on this and decided he didn't want the little bit of orange uh, for the lights because it would just be such a small screen that he didn't want to pay the extra price. So we're down to um, black, uh, emerald green, uh, blue, and gray. Now, while I was talking to our client, he also noted that uh, 
uh, his customer had changed their mind and um, instead of a, a green car uh, they wanted to go with a red so that's not a problem uh, we've got um, a couple choices of red here and we're going to go with the uh, Pantone 185 or 186 uh, both make a good red let's go ahead and do the 186 and as you can see that automatically changes our uh, emerald selection into red and uh, what that means too is now we're going to go ahead and uh, right now just go ahead and get rid of the emerald swatch now the other uh, suggestion was after looking at the work um, that maybe the tires could actually uh, be a bit darker so what we're going to do again is just what we did with the green we're going to select uh, our, our gray and then I'm going to go up here to select same fill color and what that's going to do for me is it's going to grab this tire over here and I believe we were using 430 and we're going to go ahead and take that 431 and let's see if you'll notice I also put uh, gray in the uh, in the grill area and um, if that doesn't look dark enough uh, we can always go here and I think that is actually going to work real nice for us so um, this is the one we're going to select so we can go ahead and dump these other grays right now so uh, we've got our black, we've got our, our light blue, our red, and our dark gray. And uh, that's how easy it is right now um, to change these colors around. And, uh, you know, if you do something like this and uh, have a change to do, well, you know, there's your, your answer to changing colors uh, quickly and on the fly. Uh, so our next step in this particular process is to uh, now uh, we're going to go ahead and save this file so that we can edit it this easy um, so we're going to go up to file and save as and uh, as you can see cs2 will want to convert it to a uh, cs2 file uh, it was actually a 10 when i started i'm going to go ahead since i'm working in cs2 and and keep it converted and just going to save it okay and it gives me a warning about uh, spot colors and transparencies but uh, we're not worried about that right now okay and this dialog comes up and we're gonna go ahead and save it alright now the next step and what we're going to do to um, really bring this together is we're going to save it again and uh, basically what we're going to do is save it as a EPS so we're going to save as and we'll call it Magnum Red we're going to drop down to an Illustrator EPS and we're going to save it we're going to continue and under the options we're going to save down to an illustrator 8 now uh, why we do that is because in 8 in illustrator 8 uh, these layers over here were not uh, were not common uh, in an EPS once you save it as an EPS which, which I'll go ahead and do okay you'll notice that I still have my two layers however uh, once we close the file down and reopen it which would be uh, this one here it's in one layer and that's one of the reasons why we use it uh, dropping down to a illustrator EPS version 8 is because now it's uh, it's created a little bit of magic for us and as you can see it's it's made it layer three because it was layer one and layer two uh, we can just change this now to uh, we'll just call it magnum and I'm gonna go ahead and change my 
guides back to light blue and click OK. And now it just becomes a process of getting the colors together. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a black area and let's open up our color sliders and check the information on this selection we made. Okay, everything is zero. Uh, that's good, and it's the default uh, black. So we're going to select same fill color. Everything that's in that same uh, color is, is, is here, and we're going to make sure it's there. And you can see over here in the preview. Now, we're going to hide this, uh, this selection for a minute. And to do that, what we're going to do is uh, use the control or command key and the uh, number three. So control three will hide that selection. And as you can see, it's left us with other shades of black. So let's blow up on this so that we can get them all. I'm going to go to this one. And you can see, you know, it, 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 what happens is... Uh, it distorts the color properties a bit. So we just, you know, run through this little routine. We keep selecting the same fill color, coming back, making sure we're reading all zeros here, and hiding by using Control 3. And we just work our way through the entire uh, blacks first, the, the, the outlines by doing this. And uh, it'll definitely um, help your workflow. And as, you know, you got to make sure that this is all reading zero, so it's all going to be consistent uh, when we go to put it back together. And if you'll notice, a lot of it is where my color split the black. So, like when I grab this area, um, hopefully it will grab the other grays that were around it and of course our, our color reading is off so we go back to our our black and uh, fill that and hide it okay uh, let's see did that get all of the black out of there that we needed it might have let's zoom on out and uh, yeah I believe that's got it now we're going to do the same thing with the actual fill colors. Okay, We've got our blue selected and uh, as we can see it's a spot color but it's not showing up here in our swatch palette which it should have that little white outline around it. So we're going to go select same fill color. It's going to grab everything that has the same properties that's in our sliders and then we're going to switch it back to our light blue which I used a Pantone 290 for. And uh, we can click away from that. And now we're going to go to our red. Our sliders come up. And of course our Pantone color is not uh, selected. So same fill color. Okay. Now we have all of that. And let's go with our dark gray. Select same fill color. All right. Now, that should pretty much take care of everything as far as colors. But let's just make sure. Okay, there's the red that we laid in. There's our blue. It's showing the Pantone. Let's select another area. Okay, it's got the Pantone. Uh, we can check it this way. Same fill color. Everything that's blue is is definitely selected okay now we need to get our black back on the design and the way we're going to do that is to uh, control alt 3 or command option 3 on a Mac so uh, let's go ahead and do that and as you see the black uh, does come back in now the next step Let's uh, get the car here so that we can see it. Maybe go up a little bit more. 
Okay, the next step is getting these blacks connected again into one nice shape. And we're going to use the Add to Shape area, which is this tool right here in the Pathfinder palette. And what we're going to do is we're going to hold our Alt key, and that would be your Option key for Mac users. And we're going to click on it, and we're just going to let it do its magic. And as you can see, as we blow up on it, it's joined all the black shapes back together again. Let's do a control Y. And uh, now you can see where before this tire was up into here, this tire was around here and stuff. Everything is cleaned up and is now a compound uh, path and ready for output. Um, let's go back to the um, preview mode color. And uh, now when you pop this in, you see it, it'll not select the entire shape because we cut those blacks back in. So each time you go into a different shape, even these little blue areas, you know, it'll, it'll pick them up. Um, that's basically the way you get, uh, you get these colored in vector and, um, and make them work for you. And of course, as we all know, uh, the reason people want vector is for, and holding my shift key down so it stays in proportion, is for scalability. You know, I mean, we can we can literally. Here's my original 14 inches by 14 inches uh, pasteboard that you can see. Here's how big I've scaled the vehicle out now in perfect proportion. And let's just uh, control Z to undo and get that back onto our actual board. And let's go ahead and nudge it over a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's uh, use our tab button, bring our palettes back up because there's one thing else that I wanted to go over with you on this real quick, and that's in the swatches palette. We don't need all these extra colors. We only need what's what's in the design. And uh, so what I'm going to do is come down here and uh, I'm going to click select all unused. And that takes all these swatches that aren't being used in this particular design. And we're going to put them in the trash mm -hmm. can. And it's going to ask us, do we want to delete them? A yes, we do. And they're gone. So basically that leaves us with white, uh, which is not in here, but it's good to have. Um, our black, which is all, you know, 000 and RGB, which is what we need. Our Pantone 290, our Pantone 186, and our Pantone 432. So basically the black, the light blue, the red, and the dark gray are the four colors we're working for, uh, or rather working with on this design. And that's really just how easy it is. And um, if your client called up and suddenly wanted, uh, you know, maybe he's doing this job for somebody else, uh, for his boss, you know, and he's in charge of getting the shirts printed, if they want the, the, the car changed to another color, then all you really have to simply do is select any of the reds, because we've adjusted them now to where they're the same, select same fill color and that's going to grab all our reds and then let's say they want uh, a cream color uh, all we'd have to do is take this warm gray and dump it right in and uh, there you have it I mean it doesn't get much easier than that although it can and uh, that's what we're going to do next is show you yet another way that you can take these um, non-compound uh, vehicles that Jerry does and put them into uh, maybe for you an even easier way of, of vector coloring them. Uh, I'm going to control Z back out and leave this as red and I'm going to go ahead and close the file. It asked me if I want to save the changes and uh, I'm going to say yes and uh, here we is. It, it wants to convert it back to a, a an Adobe Illustrator uh, native file now, which um, I, I 
I am going to do because now we want instead of the EPS we want to save it as an illustrator file so let's go ahead and save that and let's OK it and let's reopen it okay see our EPS file is still here and here's our illustrator file just as nice as that and uh, a lot of the reasons we do this is um, because we actually uh, you know we want to work in an illustrator file and not necessarily an EPS um, so that's one way to do it and there's even a dirtier deeper quicker way to do it perhaps that I'm going to show you next so stay tuned and that will be right up okay so there were a couple of uh, things that I missed uh, when I was going over this file that I want to touch on real quick and it deals with just little cleanup things so I'm gonna go over to this fender and I'm gonna use my uh, keyboard shortcut I'm gonna go ahead and maximize this uh, control Y to get us into the outline mode and um, let's go over here to the arrow with the plus sign next to it which is the group selection tool now if you notice you can still see some of my lines when I was drawing the color through on the black shape so I'm going to select this and you'll see it changes to red over here and then let's go back into preview and let's get the artwork so that we can see it now I'm gonna go ahead and Control C, which will make a copy of that, just in case if I delete it, I still have it there. And you can see the selection over here in the transparency uh, palette. So let's go ahead and delete that and see what happens. Okay, I think it basically got rid of just the um, unclean cut of of what was there before. So now that we've done that on the big blocky shape, I know that there's going to be other problems so we've got this blue here and I'm not going to copy this I'm going to go ahead and delete it uh, because if it if it something happens to it we're doing one step and uh, we'll be able to just uh, undo it real quick so uh, as I deleted it I noticed that I still have after I clicked on it again I do I still have my original shape that I drew which I don't want so uh, let's control Z and uh, let's give this a try we're going to select everything with a control A and we're going to come over here to the Pathfinder palette we're going to use the divide tool and what that does is it breaks all the shapes up so now let's basically see what we got we're going to go over here to the blue and as I can see right now it didn't pick up this blue but it doesn't mean that it's not over there so uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete that again and I see now that once I blow up on this a little bit bigger that there is no other blue and this is not a white selectable shape as I click around in here as you can see my cursor doing and uh, this one is so as you can see a very light uh, pane here so let's go ahead and uh, control Z uh, this particular shape um, back in to the drawing and uh, what I'm going to do is check again in a couple other areas for any instances uh, such as that um, let's see what we got going on here okay that's gonna be a black as you can see by the fill so let's go back to the uh, preview and control zero will give us our, our car and I'm actually gonna do select same fill color which gives us all our blacks and I'm gonna go back and once again add to shape and that should cut through all of these um, little shapes that uh, that are giving us a problem and so since I, I tend to have all the blacks but just to make sure I'm going to select same uh, fill color and I'm gonna copy that and then I'm gonna delete it and as you can see now 
we have all the shapes nice and clean and all they're missing at this point are the blacks and that's because we've we've copied them and we've deleted them uh, but they're still on our invisible pasteboard so they're ready to be put back in and this was just something I wanted to go back uh, and show you because it's it's to me it's important to work as clean as possible and while the other one would have worked fine I had just forgot that one last little step so uh, to get those blacks back in we can just do a um, quick control Z and that will put them there and uh, that'll make our file nice and cleaner so if we want to just go in and grab this little area it will and if we want to grab let's see if I can get it that little well see I got the black this little area of red great thing about vectors zooming up see we can grab this little area we get all the little areas um, as we select them and uh, that's part of of working in vector and especially using compound paths is that we do get those shapes to uh, play around with and um, later on in another tutorial I will uh, show you how to go back in if you can't figure it out already and um, add gradients or tint something down for more of a three-dimensional look but right now like I said I just wanted to get a very basic idea of how to take uh, what Jerry's given to you on her CD and be able to color it uh, in vector in a vector format so let's uh, go ahead and close this file and we're gonna save those changes and we're gonna get ready for the uh, other way to color uh, one of Jerry's cars in vector so stay tuned for that okay as you can see I've opened up uh, the black and white um, illustrator uh, file that uh, Jerry's done and uh, first things first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all the uh, all the blacks uh, the same color uh, same fill color and I'm gonna go ahead and bring our color sliders up so that we can see what we're looking at here uh, we need those all to turn zero so let's go over to our default and go ahead and hide them with the control 3 shortcut and this is probably going to be a stroke over here yep so let's go ahead and then select same stroke color and that looks like it gets pretty much the rest so let's go ahead and get that black all the zero and give it a good hide control 3 I'm going to go ahead and get our slider out of the way now and using the control alt 3 I'm gonna bring everything back and as if you, if you notice in the uh, in the, in the, the stroke and the fill boxes uh, it's got question marks and the reason you get that is because it's got more than one color and it's confused on which color should be dominant if any um, quick fix to that is if we go here and uh, select a black we get a black fill and uh, as we can see it's all zeros in our our slider so we're good to go next thing I want to do is um, deselect that I want to come over to our swatches palette and select all unused and get rid of all these extra swatches that that aren't being used in this okay now for those of you who may have figured this out already once you've got a car uh, that Jerry's done in Illustrator and that you can size to the uh, size you want it to you can export it right out of Illustrator I'm not sure about Corel uh, maybe somebody in Corel will know um, but that's what we're gonna do so let's go ahead and name this uh, Magnum raster so that we know that this will be the the raster file that we're working on and we can go ahead and save that as a TIFF and the TIFF options come up we're gonna leave it in RGB of course we want the resolution high at 300 dpi anti-alias and LZW compression unchecked I'll leave mine at uh, IBM PC since I am on a uh, PC and uh, we'll go ahead and leave the embedded ICC profile so let's hit OK and let that write the TIFF file okay 
So uh, we're still in the Illustrator file, so we're going to close this. And uh, it says save the changes. No, we're not going to save the changes. Now what we're going to do is make a new document. 14 by 14, and that's the size of the car I was working on. And uh, let's go ahead and maximize this window. And then we go to File, Place. Now, remember we, made, we named it Magnum Raster. So we're going to find that file and we're going to link it and then we're going to hit place okay so there it is and if you see up top one of my options now is live trace which is adobe's new version of streamline that is actually actually in uh, cs2 if you don't have cs2 you might have streamline if you have corel i know you have a tracing program in there so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and run live trace it gives us a warning that it may uh, proceed slowly because of the image is large. Would I like to continue? And uh, I'm going to go ahead and say yes to that because uh, I don't think this will take that long. Okay, we're moving along really good. I have had some that have taken a bit longer. Okay, now what we want to do is um, if we click away from here, we're going to notice that this is actually still the raster image. I don't have any shapes to click on. So really what we need to do is come up here and we need to expand it. Okay, now you see what that did? Automatically we've got all our shapes. And uh, this is what I was telling you about. Let's go ahead and, and, and get rid again of these because we changed files. Um, so we don't need those any longer. And let's blow up on this and let you look at the uh, the results of a live pra uh, live trace. As you can see, live trace is a useful tool, and I just use the default settings. But if you notice, you get a little bit of uh, thick and thin and warped curvy lines, and this is one of the reasons that I prefer doing uh, vector coloring the the way that I originally did it in the in the beginning tutorial this is just a real uh, quick way of, of getting it done if you don't feel like putting in that extra work then this would be the way to go I'm gonna go ahead and tear off uh, these two arrows because uh, what I want to do is uh, I want to use this one with the plus sign because I know right now that that's going to be a white fill and uh, I want to get rid of it so I'm going to do a copy by control C I'm going to put it in front control F I'm going to come up here to object path divide objects below and I'm going to select it again I'm going to delete and it's gone I'm going to come over here to the same thing here because we want this to be transparent I'm going to copy it Deselect it by clicking away from the artwork. Control F, paste it right back in front. Object, path, divide objects below. And let's get rid of that. Okay. Now to double check on something like that, um, let's go ahead and just bring in about 34% of a K tone. I'm going to do this real quick. I just want to make sure it is actually gone. Now, uh, we can go up here to um, Object, uh, Arrange, and send it back. And as you can see, my gray here is gone. We do have a box now where the original uh, drawing was. So we're going to have to deal with that. Okay, So let's go ahead and Control-2 will lock that gray so that it's not going to go anywhere and uh, let's see we got white there which I think we should be able to just delete because we're just getting rid of that box yeah we can just delete these as long as that gray comes in we're good to go okay so that's the way we get rid of that box now to unlock this gray and get rid of it it's just as simple as Control Alt 2 or Command Option 2 on a Mac, and then we can delete it. So we know now that 
we've basically got the same car that we did in the lesson before only it's got a little bit of you know this funky stuff going on if you can live with that uh, because this makes workflow faster then do it you can also uh, adjust the live trace settings you don't just have to use the um, uh, the default ones I did it just for a time saver okay so then what we would do is come back up here to window and here's a here's actually a, a nice little trick if I go to swatch libraries and I open other library um, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna find the uh, uh, this uh, this one that we that we are working in now if I just open that up um, it brings up my actual palette that I had used before so that's a neat little shortcut um, if you have palettes that you're you're used to using you can even make a little default palette on just a white background and uh, those colors will always be there so you can just open those up um, so in a situation like this you know now we do have a big compound uh, shape so we do this literally is point and click we'll go to our blue it's in there you know we can get all these little shapes and we can fill them with a blue and just you know we would just take take our time um, grabbing as much as we can filling in red oh, got the black again in this little area that tricky little area of course I should blow up on it shouldn't I but uh, this is another way of, of doing that and if you prefer this way if you think it's uh, you know uh, going to be faster for you then by all means you know use it so I'm not gonna finish the car I just thought I would show you that but you can go in and select all these shapes and fill them with a color and you can use this little palette trick that I showed you to um, make your own custom palettes if you're used to working with a set number of Pantone or spot colors that you use over and over again maybe they're press friendly uh, to your shop uh, maybe you've got a ma match to a specific uh, um, uh, ink suppliers then uh, you know it would not hurt you at all to go ahead and get those set up so uh, that is a real quick and down and dirty uh, way to take Jerry's cars and make them into uh, raster or excuse me vector so that you really can just go in and pop color in you might sacrifice a little bit of the line quality uh, but you may make up for for it in uh, speed and production so that's it for me I hope you've learned a bit and I hope that uh, uh, you people that have been writing Jerry asking her Jerry Jerry how can I uh, vector color your cars have learned something and uh, hey you've got the CD use it there's a lot of great uh, artwork on there either uh, precept vector uh, for you to color and do whatever you want to with enjoy it have a good time and uh, have a good time doing your art and uh, let's see some results thanks <laughs>